Hello, Rivian fans. Yes, it's been a bit since we've been back from the Overland Expo West in Arizona. It was a great experience. We met several other R1T owners and lots of Rivian fans. We talked to a lot of the exhibitors to find some ideas for outfitting a Rivian. And in this video, you'll see a set of some of my favorite items, like some recovery gear, the jack system Rivian uses for its service vehicles, some rooftop tent alternative ideas, and a pop-up trailer that looks awesome that I want to try out. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to customize and test these out on the Rivian. I'll put chapter markers to each of the sections and links to the manufacturers in the description below. Coming up, I have one more video talking about our experience towing a trailer to and from the expo, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Ryan, what do you think about a solution like this for my Rivian situation? Yeah, so what I've actually talked to some of the engineers and, and folks over at Rivian is if we could actually get a different uh, crossbar setup that would actually allow us to have a riser with the crossbar system and maybe not kind of the full height because we don't want that drag on top of it, yeah. um, but lift it up maybe eight inches. So or you still, how about adjustable, right? Or, or even adjustable. Adjustability you know, causes some problems and yeah. stuff when you have rooftop tents on it. You know, simplicity is kind of the key that you want to keep for yeah. off-roading I mean, for even sure. Even in this situation, you get a fair amount of drag from this, but only that six inches or so, eight inches. I don't know, that's probably like a foot above yeah. the... But that's much better than the trailer. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Well, and if you notice kind of the accessories that they adapt to the Jeeps, you know, they've been able to actually mount, you know, steps. Oh, so nice. So these are steps that are integrated into the hinge system, which you couldn't do on the Rivians. But they even have steps here. Ah, sweet. So, so that you can, you can basically get up. to the top. I love it. I would not feel safe in this setup. All right, this is Chris with GearAmerica.com. He's going to walk us through some of the recovery gear we've got here. For basically, for a first time Rivian owner, what, what you might recommend. Yeah, absolutely. And a Rivian being a heavier vehicle, you know, up over that 7,000 pound weight, you want to make sure you have the right weight of vehicle. We overbuild our stuff, so we got a lot of stuff that's going to work really well. What I would recommend for a basic kit would be start with the 45,000 pound, four inch by 30 foot tow strap, combined with the 10 foot tree saver slash short strap. And those why are both would you 40 want to, Why would you want both? Well, one. because this is 30 feet long and this is 10 feet long. Okay. Um, this is designed to be a tree saver, so if you're winching, you put it around a tree instead of putting your right. cable around. But what people are finding, a 10 foot strap is great for tight locations. Like for example, oh, we were down right. on a riverbed where we didn't have 30 feet to pull on a little embankment. Somebody gets stuck, I used a 10 foot strap instead of a 30 foot strap. So for like the basic kit that's going to cover everything, we recommend going with a long and a short. Great. Um, okay, what else? So, so for the these. connection points on the front of a Rivian, we do have our 45,000 pound capacity yeah. soft shackles. Uh -huh. So Wait. since you guys are already set up with a closed yeah. loop system in the front, you can use the soft shackle, put it through your strap or the loop. Okay. You're all right, connect it, and you're good to go. So you don't have a hard shackle in the front, you have a I soft see. shackle. Okay. Yep. Now for and the- then, And then you would attach something like this. Yeah, for, you can connect like, a kinetic rope or our, our toe straps also have a reinforced loop on the end. And so the kinetic would be more for like when you're trying to pull somebody out of mud. Yeah, that one's more of mud, like a towing sand, situation. Snow, anything where you're stuck, stuck. Like a, this is a static strap, so it doesn't have any give to it. The kinetic right. rope has stretch to it. So if you've got something that's really buried in the, the muck and the snow and the right. sand, that provides a little bit of spring to it. it has a 28% okay. elasticity to it. So what about attaching it to the vehicle itself? Now, if you're looking for, so we got the soft shackles for the front, for the rear. I'm gonna come around this side. Okay. Pardon me. Yeah. So the soft shackles will help in the front because you do have those tow hooks in the rear. If you've got the two inch hitch receiver, we've got a closed system for the back too. This is our mega shackle hitch receiver. It's got an eight ton shackle with an eight ton receiver plug. Comes with the pin, the isolator, everything. So that way you just put it in, you put your, your, your pin in and you've got a full on recovery point for the rear vehicle. So that covers nice. the front, the rear, straps, kinetic ropes. Everything is nice and heavy duty and overbuilt for the heavier vehicles. Sweet. All yep. right, perfect. Thank you so much, Chris. Yep. So what's this? This is uh, Factor 55. Uh, they're known for a lot of their aftermarket recovery uh, components. You know, as far as the Rivian community is concerned, you know, their uh, link, so Hitch Link 2.0 would be something that's really important because the Rivian doesn't have a recovery point from the rear from the factory. So if you get the, the Rivian recovery kit, 
it comes with one of these actually in the kit, or you can buy it separately from Factor 55. So, and you would you would just put that in the receiver hitch, and put then it, use one of these it. other bits to connect it onto. Yeah, a rope. and then you could use what's called a soft shackle to actually do a recovery to be able to hook to that and hook a recovery, you know, a actual kinetic recovery rope to the vehicle to pull it out. Chuck, tell us, tell us about these jacks. Yeah, so we're Pro Eagle. We started in 2013 and we wanted to revolutionize what the jack industry was. Uh, up until then, jacks weren't made for rolling around in dirt or, or gravel or anything that wasn't a nice groomed garage floor. Uh, even going over hoses and zip ties was impossible for those. So we changed that by adding um, the uh, composite wheels, the hardened steel axles, and um, we added an extension on there so you can get extra lift height. All of them have a solid steel bottom so that if you are using it in soft dirt or sand, it doesn't sink. Um, so we made it work for what us off-road enthusiasts were doing with them. If you're going off-road, we're the only company that makes anything like this that's user-friendly and that you know, just about anybody off the street can be able to use. We've all seen the, the farm jacks and we've all seen all the bottle jacks and all that stuff. You've got to get on your hands and knees and get down underneath your vehicle. The farm jacks are difficult to use and people have their own issues with those where we've simplified all of that. So that's why they, you know, they want to look for a better solution and they came to us for that. Nice. And, and so what are the differences between the three, three uh, displays? So here? this is actually just a three ton. It's out here on display so people can roll it around and see how well it works. And then this is the same three ton with the, the taller extension. And then we offer a two ton when we offer a 1.5 as well that isn't out here. But for the heavy vehicle, which is the Rivian, I don't recommend the 1.5 tons. Okay, why, why the uh, ball hitch on this one? Uh, so that's just to move around trailers. So we uh, were using it in our shop just to move our, our own trailer around and thought, you know what, people might like that and we actually sell them like hot, like hotcakes now. <laughs> nice, yeah, I, I saw that as well. I've, I've got a trailer with me and I thought, uh oh, I need one of those to take home. There you go. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. No problem. Yeah, so one of the things that we're looking for right now is how we do one of these 270 awnings. So they, they're called 270s because they go 270 degrees around the vehicle to give right. you full coverage, to give you really protection. So if you had your camp kitchen slid out of your Rivian, you'd be able to cook under it and be protected from rain, snow, whatever else. Yeah. And then the key though is you got a lot of mass on the side here that if you have it sticking yes. out on a standard vehicle, it introduces a lot of drag. So for the Rivian, we would have to figure out a mounting system to bring it in closer to the cab where it could still deploy and not interfere with the door system. Let's talk about the shower. Yeah, I mean, shower, it can actually double too for basically changing. So privacy changing, you know, your clothing into a bathing suit. Um, and it just gives you that extra bit of privacy. And the other thing that it does is if you're trying to actually get dressed in the wind or take a shower in the wind, you can actually stake these down and have oh, a yeah. place that's a little bit protected from the wind when you're doing those type of activities. I love these little bivy too. They're, these are cool. And this one's wider than the other one. This is wider. This would be a two person bivy here versus a one person bivy. Um, so, you know, it gives you a couple different options. You know, Becca and I, we actually started camping in a two-person bivy. Oh, really? Yeah, that's what we started backpacking in. I mean, technically I did two army days. Yeah, oh, exactly. <laughs> yep. It was like, like this. Okay, now what, what's special about Craig is so, you're also Denver-based, right? Denver-based, that's correct. Okay, tell us about what you got here. So let me, just, just for a second, a little history. My partner is kind of a tinkerer engineer, and he built the original one out of marine plywood for a Toyota Tacoma. And what he wanted to do was have enough space in a Toyota for him and his wife and his two kids to be able to travel with them in an environment that was that was like your trucks, yeah. where you can be isolated from the environment in bad weather. Right. Because we're in Colorado, right? Yep. One minute, we got a foot of snow last night. <laughs> well, I know, I heard. Eight inches? Yeah. What he designed was a system where the whole bed platform slid forward over the cab and opened up the back of it. And what happens is, is you lift up the top, it's hydraulically lifted, and then you slide the whole thing 20 inches forward. So, so as it's when it's closed, where's the front? The front is right on the on the front. Okay, of the, so it's sliding uh, about a, a foot 20, or so forward. 20 inches. And and to see it and to appreciate it, the best way to do it is just to get in it. The, the bed platform here is an insulated um, half-inch balsa core. 
Um, so it, it's all got an R value, and then the R10 on the mattress, you just do not get cold. They didn't know that. And then if you put the tailgate down, yeah. So one of the things when you go out off road is you, you need coverage from wind, shade, whatever. So this is integrated, but when you, uh, unlike all the other vehicles where you've got to bolt something to the outside, we wanted to not do that. Right. Because everything you bolt to the outside creates drag, which influences range, and it creates wind noise, which we also don't really like to. Yeah, the range is a big deal for me. Yeah. And where do we find info about your company? So you can go to hatchetoverland.com or find us on Instagram, obviously, for Hatchet Overland. Cool. And um, my name is Craig Fisher, and thank you very awesome. much for thank taking you the so time much, to Craig. visit us today. This is super great. Skyler Nelson from MDC USA, based out of Phoenix, Arizona, Salt Lake City, Utah, and cool. Orange County, California. Cool. Now, now the reason we stopped here, Skyler, is because we, we saw this trailer option, and, and as I was explaining, we pulled the bean trailer down here, which had a lot of drag, yes. and it affected our range. So now I'm thinking, like, okay, what if we have a super low profile yes. trailer? So tell me about how this folds down. Give me a yeah. very quick run through of what you, this trailer is like. Let's talk about towability. You really hit the nail on the head. Is it's low profile, so there's zero wind resistance. Even when you're passing by a semi or a semi is passing you, the wind vortex that it creates is virtually ineffective. So smaller tow vehicles with this super light, I realize Rivians are real big. Uh, Jeep Wranglers can tow it no problem with that tow capacity, even with a shorter wheelbase. When it's in tow mode, if you will, we're this tall. So there's really not a lot to you. So your center, uh, uh, your mirror, or your backup camera can see the trailer there. You just That's the only reason why you need to check it is to make sure it's still with what you. What about the length of the Length, trailer. so we're 15 feet, two inches long on it. Closed or open position, so it's the same length whether it's closed or open, so when it folds over, the pivot point is right here for the front bed, folds over. You remove six poles gotcha. from the inside, fold the rest down, you fold your table down, which also makes into a bed, and uh, you're ready to go wherever you need to go. So and the other thing I like about this is that the wheels are nested inside the frame. Correct. The frame's higher, which I'm okay with. Yeah, so we have but... independent suspension under each tire, so there's trail arms underneath there. You can get a good shot of it right here. Shock and coil suspension. Anywhere where your tow vehicle is going to go, I guarantee you this trailer will make it. We're fully galvanized uh, frame underneath. Um, essentially, it's it's a tank on wheels, but it's still lightweight. We're at 2,488 pounds on this trailer uh, before you put in your gear, water. Um, that includes the annex room, which I really like. Everything we do is standard with and our this company. This is the super light. This is a super here. light right here. So your bed up front, your booth dinette that makes into a bed, and then your outside annex room which almost doubles your living space on the outside. Okay, and the, is this showing the annex room or no? No, I couldn't set it up because okay. I was limited on space. The annex the room is going to extend just past the kitchen there. Okay, so the kitchen pulls out there. Yep. This would be a fridge space. A fridge space right here. We have two ways to plug in your fridge, uh, the normal traditional cigarette outlet, and we also utilize an Anderson plug on it. That's genius. Okay, so and then this whole thing would be an yeah, annex. Yeah, it's going to go just past our fence line here, the whole length of the trailer. There's three uh, hook points. Uh, one on the end, one in the center, and one on the other end, and then it also utilizes some very heavy-duty Velcro. How about setup takedown? First time doing, I like to tell customers it's going to take them 20 minutes. After that, I have it down in about 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes time. Okay. So uh, it's really about pole utilization. It's, it's, it takes more time to find the poles and where you put them than it does to actually put right, up the poles. Right. So if you're an organized person, 10 minutes, no problem. And this is kind of designed for sort of off-road. That is our whole thing. We want our customers, you can not only go to normal Take campgrounds, obviously, like uh, the beautiful campground here, or you can just hit a road. If your vehicle is able to make it down, my trailer will be able to make it down too. Awesome. All right. And what's the price of this one? We're at twenty two nine ninety. So that's actually, I mean, it sounds like a lot of money to some people, but compared to a lot of these other rigs, that's a pretty good price. Correct. When you look at our durability, we've been in business in Australia since 05. This product has been fine-tuned since then. So we're able to control our costs. We're able to control our shipping costs. Yeah. We have some very great partners in the shipping industry and the battery industry with some of our accessories. So this is to get people out camping. You and know, that's are, our bottom goal. These are available to buy in the States. They're already. available to buy right now at one of our three locations, and we're expanding east as we speak. Okay, where are your locations? Phoenix? Phoenix, Arizona, Salt Lake City, Utah, and Buena Park, California, located right oh, next to Nosberry Farm. Nice. Okay. Well, thank you so much for the walkthrough. That's awesome. No problem. I think this would be a great solution for a Rivian owner. Yep.